Yep, the time has come to screw these frames into the keel timber. In the last installment, we went over how we are finishing and sealing our steam bent frames, along with explaining the purpose of and the process behind cleaning up the frame sockets. Once the sockets were cleaned up, they needed to get resealed and painted before the installation. Morning everyone. So today is the first day of hunting season for deer here. So Steve is out gathering some meat. Sorry to you vegans and vegetarians, but we do eat meat. Um, so while he's out there, we are trying to get ready for this weekend, which means we are going to be steaming some more of these frames in. So we're hoping to get the rest of the rabbit set up um, and the frame sockets cut out. And then we got a couple people coming and and try to get a bunch more of these frames in since we're trying to get ready to plank this winter. Um, so while he's out, I'm gonna shellac the rest of these pockets and uh, get upstairs to working on um, oiling the frames. I know some of you have been hoping for a little bit more candid content, so here's my attempt at doing that. Um, it's been a little bit hard for us because there's just so much work to do. And with keeping up with the videos, sometimes it can be a little different. Cool to both be in the boathouse at the same time. It takes me a little while to make the videos. So, you know, we kind of got to work around that. The other thing too is, you know, a big part of this project is making a set of videos that is going to be useful for people down the line. Basically, we're making something that we wish we could have had when we started. Um, and also sharing our story. So, some of the videos like the last one where we went through finishing up the frames, yeah, they might be a little bit tedious, a little bit boring, but it's all part of the journey and uh, we're going to still try to do more videos, more like this one where we get a little bit more uh, of the actual boat work going on. We would be more than happy to direct all of our energy towards working on Arabella, but with winter approaching, there's no shortage of things to do around here. With help from our friends Mike and Kristen at Jamestown Distributors, we worked on getting Victoria's spars up into the newly built second level of the boathouse. We're hoping to repurpose as much of Victoria as possible, so stowing these items somewhere safe this winter was important to us. Yep. Oh shit. Running along similar lines, we slowly started taking Victoria apart. At the moment, these are mainly things like removing her lifelines and bowsprit, which made it harder to keep her covered and protected over the winter. Finally, as I mentioned, we want this project to be a resource and an inspiration, so we recently hosted our second local class to come for a visit. John contacted us and told us that his science class was learning about density and buoyancy, 
So they came by and spent a couple hours here. The 39 kids split up into three groups, which rotated between a talk with Steve in the boathouse about the project and a buoyancy demonstration. A buoyancy challenge to make a vessel out of a single piece of aluminum foil to see which could hold the most pennies. And finally, a short writing piece. We had a great time and it was a fun way to give back locally. So we've got kind of a crummy freezing rain kind of day here today in the boathouse. And uh, we've been working on finishing up the frames as you can see behind me. We've got, I don't know, maybe one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight frames to finish up. So we're gonna try to finish those out today. Um, like I said uh, earlier, we're trying to finish up the rabbit so that we can steam bend the rest of those frames in uh, this weekend. We probably won't get all of the rest of the frames in, but at least if we can uh, get a couple more in there and start working our rabbit up the stem and the stern, and then this winter we can be ready to plank. So that's what we're gonna do today. Since we're gonna try to finish up all the frames today, we're gonna try to take them all out at the same time. So in order to uh, avoid confusion, I'm gonna take a Sharpie and mark all the tops of the frames uh, with their position so we know where to bring them back to. So check this out, this is pretty cool. I, I just took out the rest of the frames we need to do for the starboard side, and you can see when they're laying like this, side by side. And these aren't you know, consecutive, there's like a couple gaps in between them. But you can see the drastic change in, in shape of each one, um, which is pretty neat to see like this. It's different when they're in the boat. We were doing the frames upstairs before because it just kind of made sense. It was right there and we just brought up the couple soft horses. But since we kind of want to blow through these, I brought these down here and kind of set them up on this makeshift uh, stand here. And um, I'll be sanding all of these and Steve's finishing up a couple emails inside and once he's finished he'll come in and I'll have a couple sanded and he can take those upstairs and start oiling them. So we can kind of do this production style and kind of start moving on these. So I guess I'll get started on that. While the frames and sockets dried, it was the perfect time to test and see how screwing in the frames with the bronze screws was going to go. So there's a saying in woodworking, without scrap, it's crap. And this is one of those instances. So we're getting ready to screw in the uh, frames with these big old bronze screws. And before we do that, we gotta do some test fits with the drill bit and with the screws and the screwdrivers and make sure that everything's gonna go smooth and hunky-dory in these oak timbers. Because if you snap one of these off or get it stuck halfway, oh man, it could be a nightmare. We really don't wanna do that. We're using these number 18 silicon bronze screws and all of the fastenings in the backbone we're using are silicon bronze. And that way we don't have to worry about um, galvanic action between the different metals because everything is either lead, bronze, or copper and those all get along well. <clears throat> and we also don't have to worry about iron sickness in the oak, which is something you can get with iron fastenings in oak. Uh, so we're using these flat headed screws. And the reason we're using a flathead is down the road, we can kind of scrape this slot out and get a screwdriver back in there. And you can even carve kind of a deeper, newer slot if they're really messed up. Uh, another thing we did was we got these screwdrivers and we modified the tips. So normal off the shelf screwdrivers, they're at a bit of an angle and they're really sloppy fit in these slots. 
And you don't want that because you're going to end up tearing out the head of the screw when you put it in or take it out. So we ground back the tips of the screwdrivers and then we took away that taper so that they fit really nice and tight in that slot. And that'll help a lot when we go to put them in. Before we can put these screws in, there's a little prep work to do for the wood. We already drilled the pilot hole and we did that with this uh, tapered bit that matches our screw. So it's the same taper and it's the same amount of length. Normally you would get a bit that also has the countersink for the uh, screw head on it, but I stupidly ordered bits that were too short. So they're on their way and for now we'll use the longer bit to drill the full length hole and then we'll drill the uh, countersink with this one. Uh, so now we'll countersink. Okay, and the last step before we put the screw in is to give it some wax. So we are using just regular old toilet bowl wax. So we're just going to stick it in the wax. And all we're trying to do is get some wax on the threads like that. And then in the hole it goes. And we're going to use the bit and brace here to drive it home. So now we're just gonna crank it home. And what that wax does is it helps lubricate going in and someday coming out. And the other thing is it fills up any little nook and cranny in there and makes sure that no water wants to get in. It seals up that wood. So now we have that screw driven in and hopefully everything's a nice snug fit. That went in pretty easily, which is what we're looking for. There we go. We can split the timber. I think that's a success. Nothing like smell of dolphinite <laughs> in the morning, huh? First one going in. First frame! Grab the sledgehammer and run up to the top and just give it a couple tunks. Whoa. Hard to see. I uh, yeah, I think you're pretty strong. Can you just push down?
wieder. Now that the midship frames are all in their homes, uh, we're going to get the middle of them clamped up to the rib ends, and then we got to pop the rib ends off up on the bow and the stern here so I can finish up the rabbit and frame sockets because in what, two days, day and a half, we're going to finish steam bending the frames. So all the frames should be bent in by the time you see this video, but we will uh, cover that in another episode, so stay tuned. <laughs>